Let's see. Gray Zone Warfare pre-alpha gameplay. Tactical. Immersive. Tactical. ahead and brave. Gray Zone Warfare, the new PvEVP shooter by Madfinger Games that puts you in the boots of a PMC operative deep within the jungles of Southeast Asia. Completing missions in a 48-player server with three different mercenary factions of 16 players each competing for control, with multiple planned factions of AI fighting over control as well. Is it just me or does the game look better in this video so. than the last one we watched? I was watched. kindly invited by the Gray Zone devs to play an early version of the game, and rest assured, I can confirm this is a real game, albeit an early look at a pre-alpha of a real game. You spawn in at your base, pick your loadout, grab a task, and watch as the little bird you called in to pick you up moves across your blue force tracker as it comes in to land. Your base is a physical safe zone at the corner of the map. Imagine Chinaris in DayZ with three different faction safe zones on the corners. When you enter a raid, you simply get into your helicopter and fly in, or you can just walk in. There's no raid timer, the world is persistent, whether you're in a raid or not. Whoa, That's it's pushing cool. the trees. Oh, dude, the downdraft yeah. from the chopper looks so good. Yeah. That's cool. Trees. That's what pretty cool. That's that's that something really new. I'm gen I don't know, safe zones are kind of iffy though in games. They have to be done right. Safe zones can be really lame if they're not like uh managed properly. As you lift up from your base, you'd expect a fast travel transition or a loading screen, but no. No loading screen at all. In fact, throughout the entire playtest, the only loading screen I ever saw was when I launched the game. Starfield, take notes. Like, could people just shoot you uh, right now and kill you? So, so what's to stop people from just like sitting at the safe zone and killing everyone? The reactions I like to hear. The reactions I like to hear. Sound-wise, I think I disliked most of the sound in the game in the version we played. Firefights were audibly uneventful, quiet, and just didn't sound scary, lacking necessary reverb and distant echo sounds. Environment audio is this mono looping track that never leaves your brain. We're far close. I'm hitting him. I'm gonna push. I think that the only audible part of this game I liked was the little bird, it's nice. This yeah. is the piece of feedback that we gave them that they immediately replied with, yeah, we're fixing it. But if you look at the most recent IGN gameplay, which is a newer build of the game, it just has frogs as loud as humanly possible. So yeah, the, the frogs were. The frogs are louder than the guns. Did we watch the that? The frogs were so bad. <laughs> felt like I was playing a day Z mod rather than an extraction shooter. With no raid timer, extraction, or spawn camping is nearly impossible. Or at least will never happen on purpose. With a more open map, I'm not forced into choke points like in Tarkov. The overall player threat in this version would be something similar to a lower population. So the, more on that later. the the thing with that is it's like I'd be worried that you don't run into players enough to make it enjoyable like there has to be a balance of you actually run into people and need to kill them and fight you know like you can't make it too if you make it too the big there's not enough action and then it gets like bleh I mean, I think the lighting looks oh, amazing. Yeah. The lighting is the standout you, the visual of this game, like for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you can either load up for killing... What are, are these? What are, they, what are they called? Bandits? or oh. They're not bandits. They're, uh... You took a shot, too. I'm hit. Like, yeah. I, think, I think he's down. All right. Yeah, like the that like, looked I was a bunch good. Mass and he wasn't going down. Well, that looked really good now. right there. I feel like you could probably run like hollow points for killing oh, focusing scabs. More right here. Yeah. So then players are gonna be. Whoa. Back up, back Ooh, up. Come back and get, get, up. A frag. get a frag over there. Just cover the corner. I've got the corner. I don't have frag. I'm holding corner. Oh, far, far, far. Past the corner. I have no eyes. We get it. We get out of this lane. Yeah, yeah, come back, come back, back. I'm just pressing. I'm holding corner. Alright, I'm backing up the I was trying to get some, get a hard point in the building. 
I hear him on the other yeah, side. Yeah, let's get out and to the left, out and to the left in the shed, at least for people. I don't, he right was right saying right. he doesn't like the way it sounds. It sounds pretty decent. I mean, it could be a lot better, but to the right. it doesn't okay. sound bad by any the, means. Street moving left to right. Got it? Load. Fine side. Us, man. Man, this is so good, dude. Just the visuals are it, so it needs good. like more echo, no, basically. Right like it's yeah. not bad, but it it doesn't like there's not echo of sound like when you shoot. I'm gonna watch the way we came. Nobody's outside, correct? We're all in. You want high low here and one on your shoulder? Okay. Oh, I think I'm gonna peek that alleyway again. Uh, shots coming through the wall. I do think that the headset oh, audio is a bit wall, too compressed. Cool. He goes, come on, okay. see it. He's pushing around. Here, you want to push it? He just uh, uh, you want run from grenade. left to right. Looks slow gameplay wise. I mean, they're also playing kind of slow. I'm going to try and rotate on the contacts here. Okay. I'm we with you. Yeah, they're still by that same wall. I'm with you. I feel like they could be doing this oh, more quickly push. here. Fine, fine, fine. In the alley. Yeah, they're crossing this too. Okay. Coming up with you. Check map here. So Loading. they they don't infinitely respawn as far as I understand, right? Probably That's not the same zone. Oh yeah. yeah. That pistol recoil looks kind of wild. Okay, yeah. So I think we gotta move here, boys. I don't know how I feel about that pistol recoil. As well, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna really quickly load. My mag's here. I'm gonna check this corner up here. Let's see if anybody's still... Yeah, I definitely think uh, loading animations need to be in, because the old just like throwing rounds back into your mags Which is a bit weird for a game that doesn't have a time limit. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, is he just instant loading mags? I'm sure they'll change okay, that. Okay, you? I do really like the Blue Force Tracker style map. That's neat. Use, uh, serve, see if Inventory looks crap. I mean, that's um, easy. That's yeah, just like injury. putting a different yeah, skin over the kill. UI. Like, uh, that's not... We'll we'll see. I wouldn't be concerned on how the inventory looks as far as the UI. It's more about the functionality of it. Like, that's not... Dude, this, this animation is long. <laughs> Holy... That's just... That's an easy thing to change, you know? Oh, yeah, that, 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 that fixed it. So, organ injury uh, is serve kit. We'll solve it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, check your energy and hydro, too, guys. If you're low. Oh, this, is, this is early, early, early alpha. Back back I'm more concerned about, like, the core aspects of the game. Watch him screw back Stuff like that is very, like, dainty. Yeah. more than likely going to change. Yeah, fingertip twist is funny. I don't know why. Alright, so check your compass. We're trying to get to the waypoint. Uh, get the first objective. Also, I don't even think awesome. it. I don't even think right, it's. So check fingertips. Like, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with the inventory. I mean, like, the the images look not that great, but. I don't know. I'd even just be fine with staying like that. I wouldn't mind. The images look like shit, but honestly, it's like months, brother. it's fine. It would even be fine just like that. This fingertip twist is funny. I don't know why. All right, so check your compass. We're trying to get to the waypoint. Uh, get the first objective. I think I hear somebody over here, buddy. That Emory animation is awesome. It is. It's so stupidly good. <laughs> Get on level here. I'm coming. Did you go here on the right? Dude, the, the foliage looks really f good. Like, this here looks really good. Did you go here? Like, look at all that. Here on the right? be a chicken. I don't know. Ooh. A chicken? That looks yeah, sick. If you kill them, you can cut them up and craft them into fried chicken. I, I'm just mainly concerned with how the game is going to make you, like, interact with players and, like, what's the incentive going to be to fight other players? Because... Two, you took two hits. Back out, back out if you need. Yeah, I'm back and I'm back in. They're right in the middle. Whoever's still holding, you took two hits. 
I'm coming in. I mean, killing AI can only stay entertaining for so long, right? Behind as well. Oh, shit. Reloading. He's dead. He's dead. Contact front behind the truck. Wow, I hit him. There's another guy on the left. Well, uh, <laughs> dude is okay. not done. <laughs> When hit, you can bandage yourself with a very physical animation that spawns an entire toilet paper roll on your arm. And here I accidentally splinted myself, uh, tourniqueted myself, and then bandaged myself because I was clicking the wrong buttons and could not animation cancel. But when a buddy gets hit, you can also aid him. You can be downed in a sort of cardiac arrest state as well, not dead, similar to Arma 3 Ace's down state, where you and your friends can work on your medical issues to eventually have you Skip back coma. Up. Come over here. This is the uh, second building. Okay. So kind of what like happens if you skip your coma? Looking for these certain buildings that were covered with graffiti. So if you kind of notice the same graffiti from this building and the other one. And then I'm also curious. One, yeah. So you enter, you enter the map at the base, and then you go to wherever you're going. So that means you have like a stash, probably, right? You have some type of stash. Like, what is the the loot? trader cycle look like like are there traders do you have, are you going to be looting a lot of stuff or is that not super important i'm i'm kind of curious about what that the update with the car situation Hopefully still waiting first. it is right here on this table forever waiting brother gotcha but overall even with the cool medical system the cool guns graphics and environment i just felt that without the threat of players as there was no chance of pvp in this playtest i couldn't get very immersed fighting the seemingly facts AI. it created some cool little moments but it was surface level clean even facts said in a feedback session a very similar opinion i was just gonna say like i think one thing that's gonna be crucial for this game's success is making the ai like feel like they're actually living in the world like, stalkers yeah, so stalkers. Okay, disagree. AI always sucks ass. You need PvP. There's a good example of that. Like, they go on patrols, they go and sit at campfires, they that eat, they talk to each other, they engage with each other, they go and, like, go. It sounds go cool. Like, go okay, in, in theory, having good AI would be awesome, but it, no one ever has good AI. Enemy squads and try and take specific locations, but also things like from Metal Gear Solid. Where in Metal Gear Solid, like when you go knock out the generator, the guy goes and fucking looks at the generator and sees what's wrong. You go cut a light out, there's like, huh? What was that? That was weird. So I think looking at games like Stalker AI Life in terms of like the world interacting with itself, as well as games like Metal Gear Solid, where the AI are really intelligent in like the areas that they're at and how the how like the player engages with them is is going to be crucial to make this game interesting. If fighting the AI are such a large component. Wait, did you just say PvP is what ruins every game? PvP is what makes people love games. Big disagree, dude. Big disagree. The only, like, AI games that really do well are, like, w any game where enemies shoot back at you, the AI generally sucks. Like, sure, wave defense type of games work, but as soon as you're talking about, like, fast games, dying uh like realistic shooters ai is never good because you just like randomly get killed by them they either completely suck or they're way too good and it's just like random number generator if the ai shoots you or not like it's not it's not a fun mechanic to it of the main game's loop this is way too cougar <laughs> let's get a little speculative here you get what i'm saying like it, it in a game where you can die in like one bullet, right? The AI is kind of like, oh, he has like this level of accuracy and he shoots you like one out of three bullets is going to hit you and kill you. And sometimes you f die to him and sometimes you don't. And there's not really anything you can do about it. It's just, I don't know. One of the most interesting parts of the game, in my opinion, is when you die. This is arguably the hardest part of the gameplay loop for the developers to design and figure out, but it's easily the most important. When you die and escape from Tarkov, you lose all your gear and you're dead. No coming back. Sounds stupid to say, but let's compare that to Battlefield. When you die in Battlefield, you don't really die. You are just given the choice of going back into the fight to any friendly captured objective on the map, respawning with full health and ammo. 
When you die in DayZ, you lose all your gear, but you are randomly respawned somewhere in the same instance. You didn't really die, you're still in the match, you just lost your character and their gear. Your body remains out there, and if you can get back to it in time, or if your friends can cover it for you, you'll be able to reacquire your entire loss progression. This is where Grey Zone comes in. When you die, you respawn instantly back at base. Same server, unless there's a system to negate this ability. If you wanted to go back to your body and rejoin your buddies, it'd take you a minute to build a basic fighting kit in your inventory, maybe a four minute helicopter ride if it's like halfway across the map, and a five minute walk tops and boom. Okay, that's actually kind of concerning. Because playing in a, in a group then, <laughs> It, it's going to turn into, like, people coming back from the dead and going right back to their body, grabbing their shit. Like, that is very concerning with PvP for me, if that's true. Um, I mean, I know from experience playing, like, old DayZ mods, even, like... Fighting like groups of players and they just like spawn back in and come back and and get back in the fight and Like after you've already killed them eh. You're looting your own corpse This is in the current version mind you if there was PvP and it's only 1 30th of the, the entire map But the I question I have cool. remains is even if the travel time is longer, whatever How does gray zone want to handle death if I kill a player? Well, I have a time limit I'll have to put in the back of my head until that player can return, attempting to either get revenge or grab his loot. I've always found that feature alone to be a massive immersion killer in games like this. If the developers can design systems to fight this sort of gameplay or the meta that this would create, exactly. that's very important to yeah. me. The helicopter insert is also an odd feature in itself. It's definitely cool and very cinematic and well executed at the moment, but I asked a question to the devs. What if my helicopter flies over an enemy player who begins shooting at us? The pilot very likely works on pre-made flight tracks at the moment, so how would Thank you, Jamie. one dynamically change his flight path when taking fire? What if the fire was right before the LZ? What if I'd rather commit to the landing and engage the player? These small questions that started popping up began to make my head wander on all the possibilities of how players would meta this game out. I began asking questions about PvP and how I felt the description of the PvP in the game was not very clear at the moment, and I think the devs are also still trying to work out this chemistry equation just like I began to. People are saying that this is a Tarkov game, even Tarkov Killer, but it's very much not. It's a DayZ Ghost Recon game. It's a persistent world that continues when you die. You can rejoin the world after you die. It has villages with localized enemies to create dynamic PvE scenarios with potential PvP pressures. And I'll remind you again that this is a 16 v 16 v 16 PvE shooter. That means three teams of let's say four squads of four for example all doing their own quests or working together to accomplish maybe something like live events, that's speculation, in, in the world. I find that player count to be very interesting. This isn't like a squad server where there's 50 v 50 and it's very clear cut how the game is played. There's no loot between characters. There's no, uh, there's not really even a reward when you die. So the main objective of squad is to just wait. I'm confused. Does that mean there's going to be people that I can't kill if I want to? If it's 16 v 16 v 16 and I want to play solo, I have 15 other people that I can't shoot. It beat the enemy team so that you win on the scoreboard. But imagine the solo queuing experience of 48 players split into three different teams and how that would feel to have to work together with 15 other players on your team, potentially on a quest that only you have. I feel like what this is going to lead up to, if it ends up anything like the quest system in Escape from Tarkov, is where quests are going to be the primary way, the primary method that you will progress in the game. And by doing these quests, you'll likely end up on different quests than what your team... Like shooting everything? It's not even that. It's one, like, I want to play with my friends. I don't want to play with some random f people, like, off doing whatever on the map. Like, you know? Like, I don't want to be forced to be friendly with people. Nobody wants to do that. Like, you know, you don't want to be forced to do anything. There should be like an incentive to do it maybe or like some something that you gain from doing it, but you don't want to be forced to play with random people. That also just cuts down. Basically, there's 32 other people on a giant 
map that you can fight. Like that, like cuts just. <sighs> mm. I don't know. I don't. So there's a lot of mm, problems here because that I'm means not, that a lot I'm of players are going to be focusing on their own quests and not working together on major objectives. Unless we have like, unless live unless you can go rogue and kill people, but that doesn't make sense with the concept of a persistent base. Seems like you're going to spawn at your faction base. So I don't see how you'd be able to like spawn in your, at your base and kill your friendlies. World, something of that sort that can create large areas to kind of do a king of the hill battle over something similar to Arma 3. Also, Karma Kut brought up the very important idea of, year, hey, brother. if this Good is a game where you. loot is very important, what is stopping my teammate from team killing me and taking my stuff? What if I die and a random offers to it's take my stuff Three back to base, so I that. want to allow him to be able to take my stuff off my body? This is the best designed, most high fidelity- Well, yeah, also, exactly. What, what if you just get team killed by people? Like, <laughs> how does that work? And, and world that I've ever seen for like a PvP possible game, for a game that possibly has PvP in it. I'm really curious. There's so many things that they could do to make PvP interesting in this game. Imagine you're in the middle of the night in the jungle observing a village before you push in, and because there's no mission raid timer, you can spend as Anything long as you want scouting power? out the location before you go oh. in for your quest. And you hear some distant gunshots. Maybe okay, wait. So how do I communicate? Like, just general questions. How do you communicate with the fifteen other people on your faction? Like, how do you coordinate with them at all? How do you even know it's them? Can you team kill them? Like, like how does that all work? Like. <sighs> <laughs> smoke signals a radio okay but like radio what do you mean like i can just i have 15 other people like talking to me through the mic at all times is that you <laughs> like what do you mean i just have 15 random people yelling at me constantly while i play screaming shit like pressed cracks through the air, and then you see a red flare shot up into the sky, illuminating the village with RTX, with, with Lumen or whatever, and... Uh, Probably just the team leaders. So you're saying I always have to play in a group of four then? Because that would be lame as f I always have to play with three other people? I can't play solo? I can't play me and my buddy? I get paired with random ass dudes? Like, like ha that doesn't make any sense. If that's... You know what I'm saying? Uh, you get this very, very nice cinematic flare effect. And then maybe the enemy forces, the AI, are calling in a reinforcement, maybe via a helicopter or something. And they come flying in and land on the side of the town and run in. And you're able to spend as much time as you want just observing this fight. You know that another player is in that village, but unlike Tarkov, there's no choke points. There's no raid timer that's going to make it predictable on how you may find them. Then you check your map and you realize, oh, this isn't just a random engagement. This Let's is a go. live event happening at the moment. There's a weapons cache that's been stored in the village and AI are spawned around it with pretty heavily armed gear. And then you notice another helicopter landing in the distance to the north thinking, oh shit, that's possibly uh, more reinforcements for this player. And then later you hear more gunshots because it's not reinforcements for that player, but it's an entirely separate faction of players. See, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. The the unscripted, the unexpected. Yo, they just AI left them, them boys behind. That's oh, that's the their helicopter. When it comes to a game that potentially has PvP in it. I know I'm talking about PvP way too much in this video already. But Grey Zone Warfare has the ability to be one of the most unique PvP games out there if it takes what Arma 3 Wasteland, Daisy, and Tarkov do best and mix those ideas with their own unique ideas. I think this could be one of the most interesting games to come out in the next few years. But until then, I could speculate for hours, so I don't want to waste any more of your time. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see more on Grey Zone Warfare, I'm very sure I can get more coverage in the future. So I feel like I literally just have channel. more questions now than I did month. before. I have I have way more questions now about this game than I did I previously. I like... I, yeah, I don't I don't know. I have way more questions <laughs> than answers. <laughs> That's good. Uh, it's more like I have concerns. Not really questions. I have concerns. I, I, 
I, I don't know. It, it, having like three factions of 16 people, like, I don't. Does that mean that I always have to, like, okay, so is there like a server? Like, do I just join a random server and there's like random 16, 16, 16 people on that server? And I, I use the same gear over and over. And then I can play on like a different persistent server with the same gear. Is there, is there another video on it? I'm sure more people have. Maybe someone else has more. More. Uh, more answers. This guy months, gonna have some buy. I'm going to be posting this video of me free roaming around the map with no commentary after this one, and I hope that it helps put into perspective how much walking you will be doing in this game if you want to fully explore. That might sound like a diss, it's not meant to be, because once you get out of the little starter town, this map is seriously gorgeous and very immersive. And Okay, but you still need stuff to do, right? Like, <laughs> you can't just walk around forever. Otherwise, you get Daisy all over again. Yeah, like that's that's what concerns. Honestly, the main concern I have with this is just: is there going to be enough stuff to keep you interested, and is the PvP going to be rewarding oh enough to keep you playing? Like, I mean, a lot of the other stuff looks really good. It just how does that all work? That concerns me. You have a big map with not a lot of players that are also split into three different teams. And you have a giant f map with realistically 32 other people that you can shoot at. And that kind of concerns me. Had the devs literally never taken us to the quest locations, it would have taken me hours upon hours to find these buildings, which I think is sort of the point. But my feedback was this. Personally, I think that they should, one, either make the locations a bit clearer in game, or two, give you a visual hint in the quest description to help you find these spots. Giving people a reason to actually explore is always better than simply forcing them. To I mean, isn't it, it all just, isn't it all just going to get, itself, though, it was all that's just going to get posted on a wiki anyway at some point, right? Like, Tarkov quests are actually really f difficult to find if you don't have the wiki to look at. Complex. Yeah, it's just all going to get posted anyway, so I guess you may as well make it more straightforward. Wasn't fully explorable. The PvP gameplay was a shot of adrenaline that I really didn't see coming. It was a very familiar feeling. Is that you? Where? Next to the wall with a long-range scope. Yes, that's me. Don't shoot. Bandaging right now? No, 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 that's not me. Shoot, shoot, shoot. It was extremely chaotic. Very fast-paced, not physically, but in everyone's tone pizzas, and decision-making. We only got to do that one little instance. That's I instantly wish that we had more chances. Okay, so, again, yeah. thinking about this from the perspective of three factions fighting uh one are you are you going to be fighting over like a a specific building and then two how the f do you know who's on your team and how do you coordinate with 15 random people looks familiar like what distinguishes the three factions i don't even know uh, <laughs> how do you how do you know Based on the size of the map, I'm guessing that most like players that starting out won't run into much when PvP going at all, at least in the start of We will need to see how they handle It's coming. See that? That. Run into much like that. Based on the size of the map, I'm guessing that most players starting out won't run into much PvP at all, at least in the that starter That concerns me. We will need to see how they handle anti-griefing at first before including all of that the concerns me. karma mechanics that are coming down the line or whatever they decide to call them. But unless you literally walk across the entire map to go straight into an enemy team's fob, you're likely going to run into PvP when you least expect it, just traversing the map, rounding a random corner in a town, or deep in the heart of the jungle. At least from my experience, because of the pace of the game, because of the complexity of the map, actually hunting down PvP will require a lot of patience and will be quite difficult to do, I think. And of course, remember, yes. if other players isn't your thing, the right. PvP disabled servers are planned to be available from the get-go. Rip. Rip. Love you, Tony. Rip. Rip. <clears throat> Rip. So 
with all this into consideration, what do I think of PVP the disabled servers? Rip. Of it? If I could put it into one word, it'd be this promising. As I mentioned before, most of the issues that we creators raised to the devs during this test were That's rip, bro. Picks. We need this keybind. We need to be able to lean like this. That's we rip. Bro, you, one, one, immediately off the bat, you are splitting your player base into two separate experiences. People aren't all focusing on the same gameplay. Bad idea, in my opinion. Terrible. Also, just... I always say, PvE gets boring like people will play it and then they'll move on to something else if you want people to really engage in your game the, the thing that's going to keep them around is good pvp people can only loot and shoot bots for so long before it gets boring the goat puck. It, it needs good pvp and people need to all be playing the same experience it's to be toggleable the food drains too fast the reticle is too dark that kind of thing as I said before, the core of the game was... Like I said, you could you could play a PvE game with, with not a lot of focus and play through the missions and whatever, and then you'll probably be like, sick, I finished the game and, and not play it for hours and hours and hours. If you want people to play your game for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, you need good player interaction. You need PvP, you need things that make players run into each other and interact and give them good, unique, unpredictable experiences. All the issues that I and other creators had were with aspects of the game that it's just dead you do fast in the dev cycle. Polished things like sounds and UI elements, keybinds, and of course performance, which the devs have stated is their primary the concern. The, going day, the, day's got the thing to is, end. those above ground. Thanks, Alchemic. Thanks, T-Vels. Okay, Hell Divers doesn't have PvP. Hell Divers is not a tactical first-person shooter. It's not an online tactical first-person shooter. It's not. It's a completely different genre of a game, right? Like the enemies, as far as I even know in that, don't even like shoot back at you, right? Audio, UI elements, etc. They're the first things that people notice. But like I said, they come last in the dev cycle. MFG has- when, when I'm saying these things, I'm talking about from the perspective of a tactical first person shooter with like a focus on like semi-realism. I'm very skeptical now, to be honest. I don't know. I'm not sold on it yet. It it looks it looks cool. I I'm very skeptical about the actual like gameplay loop of this.